So Diablo 4's first major expansion launches in just a few weeks, and I think it's safe to say this is Diablo 4's last chance. Yeah, it's the last, last one. Following all the preceding last chances and prior to all the forthcoming last chances. Anyway, in all seriousness, Vessel of Hatred will for sure mark a big moment for the game, especially considering what is easily Diablo 4's biggest direct competition, Path of Exile, will be launching their highly anticipated sequel just a few weeks later. Which ultimately should work out perfectly, peering into my crystal ball here, I predict that a lot of people will play the Diablo 4 expansion for a few weeks, finishing up with plenty of time before Path of Exile 2 launches, and then and they'll play that. Funny thing how the timer works out here, hmm, yeah? Now it's pretty safe to say that everyone who's been coming back to play Diablo 4 for each season, they are most certainly buying the expansion, right? The real big question I think though is does Vessel of Hatred have enough new and interesting content to entice all those players who haven't touched the game since launch, which is a majority of them who were there at launch by taking a look at the game's popularity at the time compared to where it sits now. Or to put it more succinctly, is there enough here to bring you back? Would you be interested in returning to D4? To help answer that question, there's three main things for us to take a look at. First, of course, there is all the new content and features that are explicitly coming with the expansion itself. But then on top of that, there's the base game update, which comes with its own host of updates in patch 2.0. And then finally, the brand new season that the expansion will be launching in tandem with. Each one of these things comes with various new additions, improvements, and changes to Diablo 4. And again, is there enough here to bring people back? Well, let's try to figure that out, shall we? So starting with the expansion, Vessel of Hatred, the bullet point feature list here includes, there's a brand new class, the new locations, i.e. a new zone that has several areas to it. There's the Mercenary Companions Edition, or the Return of Mercenaries, and then a new end game group focus type of content. So the new class is called the Spiritborn, and it is described as an agile, mobile apex predator of the jungle. They use glaives, quarterstaves, and pull arms with attacks that are infused by these ancestral spirit guardians. Uh, basically, he summons big ghostly animal creatures. There are four spirits in total. Each one of them have their own different focus, really, with their own abilities and effects. So the eagle skills are all about precision, impact, and quickly moving around the battlefield. Centipede skills focus on crowd control with also having poison damage over time effects. The jaguar skills are quick, hard hitting, and infused with fire. And then gorilla skills are mostly tanky, a lot of defensive boost, as well as some supportive damage. So players can pick and choose the skills from the four different guardians as they please, as you would assume, just like with every class in the game, you can pick some skills from this, pick some skills from that. You're able to mix and match whatever you like. Blizzard has described the general play style. I know it looks like a monk with some druid stuff in it, right? But they've described it as having the speed and agility of the rogue while being physically brutal like the barbarian and layered with fantastical effects similar to the sorcerer. Funny how they don't even mention the druid even though there's like a direct tie into animal like connections, but whatever. The class mechanic of the Spirit Born is called the Spirit Hall. This lets you pick which of the four spirits you want to align with or specialize in. Again, we're seeing a lot of parallels to the Druid here, uh, granting a unique passive buff and then turning all of your skills into skills of that guardian. So there's four to choose from. Each one of these gives a special boost and then all the skills that you cast while you're specializing in that guardian are of that guardian. And then also the ultimates, there's an ultimate for each spirit guardian where you essentially summon them right up into the battlefield and they do some sort of big special attack. So that's new class. Then we got the new area. This is a new region called Nahantu. It consists of six large separate areas, four of which are this deep jungle. The other two are the sprawling Red Rock Canyons. Now in the recent PTR, we actually got to take a look at the size of Nahantu. We saw the map area in which the playable space is going to be, and it seems to be slightly bigger than any of the previous zones from the base game. Not, not bigger than all of them combined, but if you take any individual zone from the base game, looks like Nahantu is a little bit bigger than those. At least that's how it looks at first glance. There's a few new enemy types in here. There are the hollows, these tar creatures born of hell, the dregs, these mutated humans tripping on poison plants apparently, and the lacunae are back but now transformed and reimagined from when we last saw them. Now I'll be honest though, you could have told me that all three of these were factions that were in the base game and I would have believed you, but that's just a consequence of this being an ARPG where everything dies in one to two hits, your screen's constantly exploding, so I don't know. You could have told me the dregs and the hollows were in the 
D4, and I would have been like, yeah, oh yeah, I remember them. Uh, either way, though, yes, there's a new zone, and with that, there are six new areas, new enemies to fight, and of course, we are expecting all of the major things are gonna be here as well, various points of interest, there will be the dungeons, there will be a couple strongholds, public events, there will be the Lilith altars for us to run around collecting, and there will most likely be a world boss, or at least looks like the map has a spot for a world boss. I don't believe they've officially announced that there will be one as of yet. Mercenaries, they are back. These are AI companions that you can enlist to aid you in combat. You will unlock them as you progress through the expansions campaign, and four of them in total for you to choose from. The first one you're going to come across is Rahir the Tank. He's a defensive fighter who helps soak up damage. Then there is Subo the Archer. It's range support and utility. Varyana is a Zerker, melee fighter, brawler right up in the action. And then Aldkin is a demon fire mage kind of a thing with all sort of demonic fiery abilities. Now with the mercenaries, they actually have this additional system. So besides having a mercenary by your side, they also have this reinforcement system, which sounds kind of neat. Basically, you can attach a Merc's skill to one of your skills. So they showed an example of a rogue player. Whenever they cast rapid fire, it would use the Zerker skill. They would show up doing their whirlwind. Presumably how this will work is you can have, say, the archer as your companion, but then you can attach one of the other three mercenaries uh, abilities through this. What is it called again? Through the reinforcement system, you can attach abilities of mercenaries besides the one who you have actively following you to then have them show up and use their abilities when you use certain abilities. This actually sounds pretty neat. Mercenaries will have a skill tree like they have in the past, but it's going to have a bit more customization than what we saw in D3, where you just leveled it up a few times and then selected from a couple options. This time, there's actually a skill tree with two branching paths that give you a little bit more customization for your mercenaries. Then lastly, the other big feature and content inclusion is what's called the Dark Citadel. This appears to be the one big new type of content that's coming with Vessel of Hatred. Like obviously the new zone is new and the new enemies are new and the new things within them are new. But in terms of a, a type of content, this is the one new one that we're getting, Dark Citadel. It is a large co-op end game dungeon designed for groups of four players. So beyond having challenging enemies and boss encounters that will ideally take multiple people to take on, there's gonna be mechanics that require groups. So these include things like puzzles that you can't do solo. They showed an example with a one player standing on a pressure plate that opens a door, then the other teammates go through that open door, step on a pressure plate on the other side, and then that opens the door for the first player to finally be able to pass through. You couldn't do that by yourself. So it's requiring multiple people. It's requiring coordination. They've also said bosses will have mechanics that require coordination as well, like stacking up and soaking damage from attacks that would one shot a single player, but would then be split between multiple or reflecting attacks back on the boss or say soaking up orbs to prevent the boss from getting buffs. And there's too many orbs for one player to do. So you need multiple people. That's the kind of things they can do. So many possibilities here. They can just pull from basically the past 30 plus years of MMO dungeon encounters to look for mechanics that require player coordination. I mean, it's Blizzard, so they need look no further than World of Warcraft. There's plenty of really cool encounter design things and, and ideas that they can use here. The Dark Citadel is gonna have armor sets for every class that's themed after bosses in the Citadel, which is neat. And there's also gonna be a unique currency used to purchase cosmetics exclusive to the Citadel. Now I will add here, for, far as we know, far as I've read and seen and everything I've watched about this, it looks like there's one of these group focus end game dungeons. It's called the Dark Citadel. That's the name of the dungeon itself. It's not the name of a new end game system that comes with multiple dungeons for us to play through. So yes, it seems like one Dark Citadel one new type of content, one area, that is what we're getting. And to go along with this new group centric activity, they're adding a party finder to the game. This will let you search for players doing things like the Dark Citadel, but also there's gonna be categories for just regular dungeons, for season events, for world explorations, for boss fights, and then just for any sort of group you wanna form. Uh, it's worth noting as well, this is not a hit queue and randomly get matched with a group feature that puts you for that activity. It is a search for uh, an invite from a large list feature of the activity you want to look for. And then also, how could I forget rune words are finally making their way into the game. This was something we knew about early on in Diablo 4's development. It didn't make its way into launch. It is now coming with this expansion. Although a bit different from how it was in D2, rune words in Diablo 4 are split into two categories called ritual and invocation. So you pair these together in your items. They replace the gems in open sockets on items. And it is a builder spender system, essentially. So the ritual Ritual runes are what you do to build a new resource called offering. So some examples of different rituals, you'll build offering by traveling five meters, by standing still, by using cooldowns, by dealing damage, by casting evade, by inflicting crowd control, etc., etc. And then that is paired with an invocation rune, and that is an ability that will automatically trigger 
when you reach a certain offering threshold. So for example, the Ohm Invocation Rune, for 500 offering, you will cast Barbarian's Enhanced Warcry. The Vex one costs 400 and will give you plus three to all skills for five seconds. Gar costs 25 and you gain 2.5 crit chance for five seconds, stacking up to 25%. And then Zahn costs 700 offering and it makes it so that the next skill you cast is guaranteed to critical strike and overpower. Now, what is interesting here is that many invocation runes are also class specific abilities, like the one that makes you cast Barbarian's Enhanced Warcry, or there's one that makes it so that your next evade is instead a sorcerer's teleport. But these are not restricted to those classes. So what that means is that you can use these class abilities via these invocation runes to give yourself, for example, a barbarian who can teleport. Really pretty neat, honestly. Although the big thing worth remembering is that these do in fact take up gem slots. So the trade-off that you're making has to account for the loss in stats and bonuses that you get from what otherwise would be gems in those slots. We'll see how it all works out. Oh, and then pets are in the game as well. Technically, they're not expansion specific. They're actually there right now. In fact, if you logged into Diablo 4 and walked over to Kyovashad, there's a, a faithful companion quest line where you get a dog pet. So the pets here in D4, they're working just like they did in Diablo 3. They run around and they pick up currency and materials for you. They'll pick up gold or herbs, crafting mats, forgotten souls, obol, cinders, gem fragments. You know, it's also, of course, going to be another thing that's in the cash shop. I think there are already pets in the cash shop or there are pets specific to the expansion, but yeah, whatever, of course, right? Okay, so that is basically everything that's like expansion specific specific, I guess, except for the pets, right? But then there's also patch 2.0 and patch 2.0 is going to be base game changes even if you didn't buy the expansion and you came back this is the sort of stuff that you would see so there's going to be a leveling adjustment happening uh the level 100 character cap is now being cut in half to 50 and then being bumped up 10 levels for the expansion so say for example if you have a level 100 character right now and you logged in after patch 2.0 they would be a level 50 character then when the expansion comes out we will be leveling from 50 to the new cap of 60 and in that process gaining an additional 10 skill points over what we currently currently have. And then after 60, it's all going to be Paragon points that you're earning. So this level cap reduction also comes with a stat squish. Numbers across the board are having their baselines dropped, but this doesn't mean that you're dealing less damage or taking more damage beyond any balance tweaking that might happen. It just means that all the numbers are being lowered proportionally. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's something like if you had 14,000 life, you might log in and have like 150 life. It is a massive stat squish from what we have now at 100 to 50. And then the stats are going to be going up quite a bit from 50 to 60 but they're just bringing all the numbers down across the board, but it's all proportional. So that there's the thing. Uh, big sweeping changes to how difficulty works. So the world tier system and the accompanying capstone dungeons, those are gone. The whole thing is scrapped. Basically, it's been replaced with just a new difficulty progression. So you'll start out at normal. And then as you play the game and leveling from one to 60, you'll in the process, unlock hard expert and penitent along that way. And then above penitent, you start to unlock torment levels one through four. And you do that by clearing levels in the pit. So clearing tier number number 20 will unlock Torment 1 for you. And then you go all the way up to pit tier 65. And that is when you will unlock Torment level 4. This is sort of like the Diablo 3 difficulty uh, settings, just reimagined and respecified to Diablo 4. Paragon system is getting a revamp with changes to how we level glyphs. So rather than feeding them experience, we basically get a percent chance to upgrade after every run. And then that percent chance gets lower, the higher and higher the, the, the glyph actually gets. Each class is also going to be getting one entirely new Paragon board to pick from. And then also, so you're going to have five boards max that you can choose. They're making further adjustments to items. I feel like this happens every time I talk about Diablo 4, but yes, item stuff is changing. So ancestral items will now start dropping in Torment 1, and they are now always going to have at least one greater affix on them, and they will also always be item level 800. Then sacred items, those are no longer dropping. They're just not a thing anymore. And in patch 2.0, they're also adding some brand new mythics, uniques, and legendary aspects to the base game. There are new skills specifically one new active skill for every class as well as five new passive skills for every class that party finder thing that i mentioned i made a mistake it's actually not technically tied specifically to the expansion party finder is going to be in patch 2.0 as part of the base game as well and then also patch 2.0 like happens nearly every big patch it comes with a long list of balance adjustments and tweaking for each and every class there's also a bunch of new quality of life features so players can now select their preferred town portal you basically port a uh, favorite the one that you like and then whenever you tp it will bring you back to that town not just the major town of the area that you're currently within they're adding a separate additional inventory tabs for dungeon key 
keys as well as socketable items. They're giving us plus one stash tab for free. They're not charging. So far, so good. Uh, wardrobe is no longer a place you actually need to go to in town. It's just going to be accessible from anywhere in your character UI. And they've also toned back the red overcast in Helltides. Since players were spending so much time there, constantly in Helltides, leveling up, grinding resources, all that. They're like, most people were spending most of their time just staring at a red environment. So they toned back the red so that we see more variety, even though we're constantly in going to be in Helltides still, most likely. And then in addition to all of this is the new season, like we mentioned. So we know the name. Season six is called Season of Hatred. That will be launching in tandem with Vessel of Hatred. And some listed highlights came out from the PTR on the select screen. We saw that the Season of Hatred is going to have us encountering creatures twisted by the ichor of Mephisto's hatred. We will have to slay Realm Walkers to access these hell portals. And then delving into said portals will give us powerful buffs, whatever any of that means. No specifics here known beyond that basic descriptors and and also these realm walkers uh, that are attempting to quote spread Mephisto's influence across sanctuary that just leads me to believe that the seasonal mechanic is just going to take place in every zone all over the world instead of just in the new zone Nahantu right that's the assumption okay so that is like everything new and different coming to the game between the expansion itself between patch 2.0 and then that vague description of what season of hatred is going to include now I know we joke about this being Diablo 4's last chance but of course fact of the matter is the game's doing just fine like big picture wise in fact last week blizzard revealed sales revenue for d4 has exceeded 1 billion dollars so suffice it to say it's made its development cost back and then some i don't know if numbers have actually come out but i would assume development costs for d4 were at least 400 million if not half a billion but so yeah they've they've, they've at least made that money back and then earned a couple of 100 million um also I'll add for as popular as Path of Exile might be amongst us like hardcore player base, the people invested in gaming enough to be watching YouTube videos about an upcoming ARPG. While you and I might be super interested and hyped up for Path of Exile, Diablo 4 still outdoes PoE in terms of its reach to the wider general gaming audience, right? So even at its peak, its all time peak, the search interest in Path of Exile has only reached about one fifth of what Diablo 4, 4 had during its initial release release. So Diablo 4, big scale, grand picture, more popular among the normies, right? Of course. But I will add though, after the peak of launch for D4, in terms of ongoing search interest, uh, post D4's launch window, Path of Exile has been trending up and in fact surpassing the game. Or in layman's terms, there has been higher search interest spikes during each new Path of Exile season than there has been for each new Diablo 4 season. And I gotta say, that is pre pretty impressive. For Path of Exile, that is pretty impressive, especially considering that PoE is 11 years old and Diablo 4 like just came out yesterday. I'm gonna be just super interested in seeing what happens when Path of Exile 2 launches in just a couple months here. But yeah, okay, back to Diablo 4. In terms of Vessel of Hatred, of course I'll be checking it out for sure. I am interested enough just to see the new content and play for a couple of weeks at least. Maybe I'll try the new Spiritborn class. It does look pretty cool, but I'm probably going to be inclined to just make another Sork or Barb again. I just enjoy those classes and their playstyles way too much. But either way, hey, we got a whole new big zone to explore. We got the mercenary systems. Of course, I want to run Dark Citadel. I want to engage with whatever systems are coming in that season of hatred. So yes, I will play Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred, but you got to keep in mind i buy and play a lot of games i spend way more time playing games than probably the average person my age and also it's part of my job right so i'm curious what other people are thinking like with everything new coming and the changes between the expansion the season and patch 2.0 is there enough here for you to return to diablo 4 are you just gonna wait for path of exile 2 to come out are you planning on playing both let me know love to i'd love to hear your thoughts uh, but thanks as always until next time i'll see you later take it easy